I think it was 2009, and I had been working on an artist collective with a friend of mine, Suresh Kumar, and we spent a lot of time trying to find a space for a group of artists to kind of share, you know, and exhibit work. And after a lot of time and effort and frustration, um, I bumped into Freeman, who um, had been playing with pallet tracks. He suggested that maybe we could build something like that for the artists of Bangalore. We sort of initially started with this idea of the Arts Collective. It, it really was sort of really pushing on sort of trying to bring the arts and technology communities together and it was really more oriented around being sort of a, a social community organization. We ran that for a year and a half and brought in lots of artists who did sort of large-scale projects like the vertical garden on the front, the sound and lights. In this phase we're trying to be a little bit more sort of precise about some of the, the things that we offer, getting into sort of um, workshops, education, um, having the flea market, having the cafe, having a residency program. So this is the, the Courtyard Cafe which is new um, and we're, we're very excited about. It's a really great counterpoint to Jaga. Like Jaga is this sort of big kind of crazy monolithic yeah. industrial structure. It's a little scary, you know, people, it takes people a little while this, to figure out how to relate all, to it. It gives all the color and the warmth. Yeah, so this is, it's, you know, there, there aren't so many straight lines, it's very organic, it's very sort of earthy. It's something else that we found is that people are really curious about Jaga, and so they'll, they'll come, but if we don't have a program running or something, they'll come see it and then it's like a monument and then yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. leave. And they don't feel like interacting with yeah, it. Yeah, there's no way to engage. And so, so now you can come and have some fantastic iced tea here. Yeah, and <laughs> see Jaga. And so here we've taken these three sections, this one and these two upstairs ones, and dedicated them to co-working and startups and things like that. So mm -hmm. people come, they plug in, they sit at a desk and use the internet and just do their work. Sit around for hours and do their thing. That's, that's it. It also has a nice view into the cafe. This is the, the auditorium. Over here we can have larger meetups, we can do screenings, we can sort of have more sort of rowdy exhibitions without mm -hmm. pushing them around and things okay. like that. Yeah. So those who want peace can have it and those who want to have be exactly. loud and noisy can have the space to do that. Okay. This is the, the terrace. This is really our, our biggest continuous space. Um, and we, we haven't even fully expanded into this area. So people can either come up here and work by themselves if they want, or we can potentially also do larger events up here. It was interesting what you said about um, Jaga being at the intersection you know, of art and technology. Um, obviously that means you'll be undertaking or exp witnessing rather a lot of projects and activities along those lines. So can you share about a bit about this? There's the arts community, there's the tech community and they are the activists like social or environmental activists and somehow these people seem to have things that they can share from each other, can learn with each other and then create something that really makes sense using uh, learnings from each of their, you know, disciplines. So, for example, we hosted the Jaga Sound and Lights exhibition where we invited um, seven artists to come and look at various ways that they could explore either the idea of sound or the idea of light in ways that hadn't been imagined yet or hadn't been completely expressed yet and how could they make the building be more reactive to people. One of the first artists in residence was actually not so much technology as it was art and the intersection of, um, of, of green activism I suppose. And so Eve actually worked with us um, in great detail on how do you construct a large scale vertical garden which would also be very cheap. Which, which we could fabricate, you know, with like local materials and this local weather conditions and things like that. There have been things like that. Um, at the same time, there have been things like, you know, the second to none guys, the, the flea market guys, a small little group of people in one of the sections and pretty soon I think they're going <laughs> to need more space than we have. Just over the last two, two and a half years that we've been around, we've really seen this kind of emergent activist, artist, start up -y kind of, which you're clearly <laughs> one of them as well. You know, right at the end there, you, you mentioned startups, and I know that, you know, I've, you know, um, used the Jaga space as well and benefited from it. And I've heard of a lot of startups, you know, sort of coming here, using the space in the incubation phase particularly. And I understand that 
the space for the large part is free unless someone wants to pay for it and someone wants to contribute you know how does that work how you know how does the business model work so we are asking people to become members now. But right now what we're asking for is 500 bucks a month to be able to sort of use the space, use the internet, and, and sort of participate in the community. And what we're, what we're hoping is that by being sort of cheap enough that it, it can sort of be a kind of a club. It can become sort of like a place that people know they can come and can spend a lot of time and it can sort of augment whatever else they're doing. Um, we're hoping that the, the money that comes from membership can at, at least support some of the basic costs of providing internet and electricity and some of our, our, our simple things. And then we're, we're going out and we're, we're applying for grants and contests and, and other things just sort of however we can to, to try to bring in money for doing other kinds of projects. What does a space like this, you think, uh, mean you know, in today's urban context in India? I feel it has a, a number of roles to play um, in terms of sort of re-examining some of the, the aspects of sort of culture in an urban context. We've sort of taken these just empty plots and, and created sort of cultural center, centers around them that, that I feel are, are now very much contributing to the, the social fabric of making Bangalore a, an exciting, interesting place to, to be. I'm personally also really interested in sort of video and, and the internet, you know, this, this notion that we now have access to sort of all of the cool things that people around the world are, are up to. Like what are they doing, both in art, in, in technology, in education stuff, like everybody who's doing anything interesting anywhere is publishing YouTube videos. And now we have the opportunity to hang out in, you know, this Indian city and and get together and watch these videos and sort of discuss and, and sort of be a part of you know this global culture and, and sort of understand what sort of prevailing trends are and and you know see how we can play and participate and you know post our own videos. <laughs>